Hi, I'm Dr. Don Bonner with Personalized Wellness, and today we're going to do the first video in this series that I'm doing on Alzheimer's disease. Again, um, I talked about that instead of doing a journal article, this uh, series of videos will be on Dr. Del Bredesen's book, The End of Alzheimer's. Fantastic book. If you get a chance, pick it up. It's well worth the read. And Again, what we're talking about is Alzheimer's disease. We're also talking about mild cognitive impairment and subjective cognitive impairment, which is, are kind of the precursors to Alzheimer's disease and that can also be tested for and treated with this program. Now, Dr. Bredesen was at the, uh, was at the uh, Buck Institute and he's been a researcher in Alzheimer's for a very long time. And one of the things that I thought was fascinating was that he realized that there's not one cause for Alzheimer's disease. And since there's not one cause for Alzheimer's disease, he doesn't think there will ever be a drug that prevents or reverses Alzheimer's disease. Because there's at least 36 potential factors that can, can bring about Alzheimer's disease. So the first problem that he really had was they couldn't do studies because institutional review boards that approve studies, they want you to have one variable that you, that you change. And what he tried to explain to these institutional review boards, but th there was no way to do that with Alzheimer's disease. So they weren't able to do classical studies like we would normally see with a drug like Aricet. But what he was able to do was begin to treat patients with his program. And now he has hundreds and hundreds of patients that have reversed their Alzheimer's disease and have followed his, what he, what he now calls his recode program or reversal of cognitive decline. So he's got a huge body of evidence that uh, as far as I'm concerned, is the best evidence, which is patience and reversing the problem that he's talking about. So that would be the program that we're going to introduce uh, today. Now, what he found was there's really three subtypes of Alzheimer's disease. It's not just one, it's just not one disease. And those three subtypes, he breaks down into an inflammatory, or what he calls it, it's a hot version, a cold or suboptimal, suboptimal nutrition subtype, and the last one are toxic or a vile subtype where you've been exposed to heavy metals or mold exposure, that, that sort of thing that causes the uh, cognitive impairment. Now, when we talk about the inflammatory portion, the hot portion, we have to talk about what your APOE status is, which is a genetic status. And as far as I'm concerned, anybody over the age of 35 should know what their APOE status is. Because if you are an APOE, if you have one four allele APOE4, then you have your risk of Alzheimer's goes up 30%. You have a 30% risk of getting Alzheimer's disease. So you have a much higher risk of getting it than the general population. And if you have two four alleles, an APOE 4-4, that risk goes up about 50%. So you really want to know that status at, a, at as young an age as possible because by making all these changes, and many of these changes are lifestyle changes, by making those changes, your odds of getting Alzheimer's disease go, go down dramatically. So, the APOE status increases your inflammation. That's essentially what happens. And that was a protective mechanism. That was something good that we had many, many years ago because in the era before antibiotics and that sort of thing, if you had a wound, inflammation could save your life. So, so those people that had this APOE status had an advantage. Problem is now, as we live longer lives, that inflammation harms us from a cardiac standpoint and as well as a cognitive standpoint. So 
We need to know that APOE status. That's the hot form, suboptimal nutrition that kind of speaks for itself. Now, the theory behind the Alzheimer's disease and how it comes about, I found very interesting in that essentially what happens is your body has a cleaning service going on all the time in your brain. So if there's a problem and you have a, a neuron that's damaged or you have a, you've had this inflammatory process, you have there is a process in place to get rid of the of the bad stuff. And then because you don't want that hanging around. And what he found was he established what's called an amyloid precursor protein which is a protein that acts as a receptor, so it's able to monitor the environment that it's in. So if the environment is really good, it's getting all the nourishment that it needs, there's no inflammation going on, that sort of thing, then it keeps everything plugging along. It, uh, it, uh, it keeps the neuron, the synapse intact, so everything's fine. But if things aren't fine, and, and we've got a damaged neuron, there's a lot of inflammation, you don't have, uh, there's, you've been exposed to mercury, you know, whatever. Then this amyloid precursor protein will cleave in such a way to where it, it uh, secretes um, certain things that break down that uh, synapse in the neuron. So it gets rid of those. And this is, this is, this is common in other areas of the body. I, I think a, a good um, bone is a very good example of this because your bones are constantly being built up and broken down. There's an equilibrium there. So if you can imagine a teeter-totter, you want that teeter-totter to be pretty even and building up and breaking down. And what happens if that breaking down portion supersedes the building up then the teeter-totter starts to go down and then you end up with osteopenia and eventually osteoporosis, weak bones, fragile bones. Same sort of thing happens with the brain. So if you tilt over to this side where you're breaking down more, then it's almost like a positive feedback. It gets worse and worse and worse and worse and you start losing more and more neurons. And as that happens, the first thing that you typically lose is short-term memory. So your body tries to preserve the things that are going to keep it alive. So it's going to, you know, bodily functions, breathing, that sort of thing are, are not going to be taken out initially. It's going to be short-term memory. And then you'll keep your long-term memory. And as it, as it gets worse and worse, you can see that more and more of these neurons start to go. So, what Dr. Bredesen found was that with this balance, there's essentially there's 36 potential factors that go into whether you're building or, or breaking down these synapses. And he equates it to a roof. And you can imagine those 30, these 36 potential factors as holes in a roof. So the more of those factors you have, the more holes you have in your roof, the more water that's going to come into your house. So the goal of, of testing is to test for those 36 potential factors, and then treatment will be to plug up as many of those holes as possible. So that's his Recode program. We're going to talk about testing on the next video. Before I leave you, one thing he said I thought was very profound in his book. He said, no one should die from Alzheimer's disease. That's pretty profound. So, I'm Dr. Bonner with Personalized Wellness. Next video, we're going to talk about testing. Thank you.